Okay, we're good. <laughs> no, that's good. Nice talk. All right. Uh, give us your uh, feelings on being named Pac-12 uh, Offensive Player of the Year. Uh, not the year, but I got the week. The year, year would be very cool, but the week was very, it's very fun. I know my mom was the first one to text me, and she goes, oh, my God, you did it. You're Player of the Week. I was like, Mom, you're more pumped about this than my own teammates are. But, uh, you know, it, it's a very cool experience to be named Player of the Week. Uh, it's just, I mean, it comes as a result of how hard our team played all week. And, uh played definitely in that game, and so it's just kind of an honor to me, but it should be a tribute to our whole team. You know, Paul Perkins ran the ball so hard, had uh, over 150 yards rushing. You know, the offensive line came to life, you know, run blocking in the second half, and uh, when you got wide receivers like we do, it's really not that hard being a quarterback. So, uh, you know, I was just glad to be put in the position that I was, and uh, I'm glad it came out the way it did. Do you go into this week thinking, I'm going to be the guy? I think, you do, I think you do that every week, you know, depending if you're a backup, if you're a starter or anything. If you don't prepare like you're going to be the starter, then... You know, I don't think it would have gone as well as it did for, for us uh, against Texas. You know, it's hard to do as a backup when you, when you know you're still not going to play. It's, it's very hard to get in. But if you don't prepare like a starter, then you'll never, when you get your opportunity, you won't take advantage of it. So, uh, you know, I know not only myself, but all the other backup quarterbacks, we all go in every week preparing like a starter. So if we were given our opportunity, we'll take advantage of it. I definitely say there's a little bit of a newfound confidence. You know, there's always that bit of indecision, you know, can I do it or not? You know, I got a little time last year, but, uh, you know, my, my first real game experience came as a replacement against Utah, and I got a snap over my head. So that, let, that sets in a little bit of doubt. But uh, to go in and, you know, for it to go as well as it did, it definitely sends a, a little bit of confidence through me. When you look back at the film, what do you think you did right? What do you think you made? I think I did a lot wrong, coach? but that's that's a coach's kit. You know, I, I, just, I think there's a lot of things I can definitely improve upon. But... Uh, you know, a win's a win, so I'll take it. You know, there's always so much that you can get better on, and you know, there's certain steps you can take, certain throws you can make. Uh, but you know, a win's a win, and we'll take it. And you know, I'm, I know our whole team's just glad to be three and zero right now. What were a few of those areas you thought maybe you could improve on? Uh, you know, I threw a ball into double coverage down the right sideline to Jordan Payton, and I know you guys saw it, and I know my dad saw it. I had to watch it with him. That was the worst part. <laughs> but uh, you know, my uh, I gotta learn to you know. Take care of the ball, which I thought I did a, a decent job of, but you can always do better. And, you know, make the plays when they present themselves and never take more than defense has given you. And that's about all you can do as a quarterback. How did that conversation with your dad go? Well, I, when I originally called him after the game, I was shocked I got to talk to him because I knew he was in the studio. But uh, he talked to me and he goes, hey, so what were you thinking on that, that deep ball to Jordan Payton in the first quarter? And he goes, I'm messing with you. Great game. And so, <laughs> you, you know, it's just kind of the relationship we have where he's always going to be the coaching and the dad. And, you know, I wouldn't have it any other way. And I know it's kind of made me fall in love with the game. And it's probably why I'll be a coach one day. And uh, it's just, it's a very cool thing to be able to watch the game with my dad and be able to be coached, but also him come over and give me a pat on the shoulder and say, hey, great job. How much were the plays that they called on Saturday, you know, a lot of plays that were meant to be short passes, or how many of those were the game more plan? Yeah, the game? the game plan really didn't change much. You know, uh, it stayed pretty much the same. It's just when you have success running a play, you kind of want to go back to it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with our offensive line moving the way they did down the field, uh, there's really no reason to go away from the run pass kind of option. So, you know, I I, I, li I think like to think that we'll have a lot more success at that uh, going forward. And uh, I'm just proud of my team. And you know, the game plan will always be the game plan, no matter who the quarterback is. We're all prepared to run it, and that's how it's always going to be. Do you expect maybe, assuming you would be the starter, that you would throw it on the field a little bit more and maybe get more opportunities to throw? I think you always take what the defense gives you. So, you know, whoever is behind center will always do that. And if it's short passes and runs that are going to win the game, then that's what it'll be. And if we want to air it out, we can air it out too. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, at, the end of the, at the end of the game, we just want more points than they do. And that's what we'll tail our game plan to. How did you feel at practice today, coming off that game, your first practice? I still I felt a little bit nervous. Like I had to like a, show up a little bit more. Like I had to, I had to go make another uh, hitch and go throw that was even better than that one. But uh, you know, practice was fun today. It's the same old, same old. You know, we're just out here trying to get better. You know, uh, we did a lot of self scout. You know, trying to get better at things that we need to get better at to be the team that we need to be. And I know that's what our focus is. And then our focus is also on uh, ASU and uh, our game next Thursday. Was Brett talking to you, or is he rough, like really looking over his shoulder now? Uh, me and Brett have always been good friends. You know, we, we like to talk about defenses a lot on the sidelines. And uh, so we'll, we'll always be good friends. And, you know, we're each other's biggest fans. So, I mean, no matter who's going to be in the game, uh, I know he'll be my biggest fan. I'll be there out there cheering for him. So uh, it doesn't really matter to us. We just kind of want a victory for our team. How much more comfortable did you feel down the stretch in that game than you did in maybe that first 
drive, second drive? Well, I mean, the first drive I felt pretty comfortable. I mean, you kind of have a haze about it, and you're just kind of in a zone. And it, it, I mean, we kind of marched the ball down the field and got a field goal. And then I got my first real hit. It's the first time I've ever been hit in the game. And I go, oh my God, these guys are just a little bit bigger in high school. <laughs> but uh, I would say during the end of the game, you just kind of, you don't really think about it. It just turns into all reaction. And uh, you know, luckily we, we had the right play called for the right time and it just ended up the way it did. You know, Texas played a great game, but uh, uh, we were fortunate to come out with a couple more points than they did. And Mora was lifting you. He was the one who was a catalyst. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, I heard I mean, him saying it. that tape. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard him saying it, and it was one of the coolest experiences of my life. And, I, I mean, the fact that my teammates felt good enough about that game and the way I played to lift me up on their shoulders honestly means the world to me. You know, it means the world to me to be a Bruin and to wear the blue and gold. So to be able to be lifted up by my teammates in and, and celebration of our victory, it just, I mean, it gives me goosebumps right now. I'm getting goosebumps. So, uh I mean, I love being a Bruin. I love my teammates, so it's just an unbelievable experience. How about what Mora said, too, about being the coach's son and how he can relate to that with you? I mean, we both know. You, you, you go home and you get coached by your dad. That's kind of the way it goes, and dads get fired and dads get new jobs. And that's just, I mean, you always wish it would be you and not them because it's just you take it hard. And uh, Coach Moore, the first meeting I had with him after my dad got fired was, you know, you'll get a chance. And I'm not going to say anything bad about your dad's regime. He worked, he worked his tail off to put this team in the position it is. And so, you know, Coach Moore giving me a chance and then it all ended culminating in what it did against Texas, I think is just uh, a tribute to the relationship we've built over the last couple of years. People we, starting to recognize you around campus a bit more? A little bit, yeah. I was at dinner with uh, my girlfriend and her family down in Huntington Beach, and a nice old couple came up and said, great game, but you have an even cuter girlfriend, which, which was the biggest compliment I could have got. <laughs> but around campus, you're not a water polo player anymore? <laughs> I know. I still am a water polo player. I still got to wear the sweatshirt for people to recognize me. What do you feel like you did in the fall and spring to kind of show them that you should be that direct backup behind Brett? I think it's been a, over a couple of years. I mean, all of, all of the guys in the quarterback room, you know, work to become a better quarterback every day. And so, you know, I was just luck, the lucky guy who got the call, and I took advantage of the opportunity. That's, that's as much as I can tell you. I mean, uh, playing quarterbacks about, you know, taking what they give you and never being too greedy. And I thought I did a good job of that during the game, but it was also a tribute to how well the guys around me played, and the def how well the defense played to put us in the position we were to win that game. And so it was a, a great team effort that came out with a win in Texas. I know Coach Morris said that you know he hasn't named two number two quarterback or number three quarterback or any of that thing. Yeah. Do you feel like is that kind of the environment they bred that you know he hasn't said you're the number two yeah. instead of Ashanti, which is kind of a fluid situation. And then, uh, I would say it's still a competition. You know, you always got to keep working. I still want to push Brett to be the number one as well as all the other guys do. You know, it's the quarterback's a hard position where it's. Uh, only one guy gets to play. You know, a couple receivers get to play, five offensive linemen get to play. You know, quarterback, there's only one guy and he gets all the snaps. So all of us want to be the starter and we all push each other to be the starter every day and it's just a constant grind to become the best we can be. You've been in the room preparing for ASU the last couple of years, not mm -hmm. having necessarily seen their personnel for this year yeah. yet. What sort of jumps out year to year and, and what, what the challenge might be? Well, they're kind of built to do what we, or built to stop what we do. You know, they're, they're kind of the same offense as we are. You know, they use a lot of different formations than we do, but they kind of run the same exact offense, a lot of zone read schemes and stuff like that. So, you know, we know for a fact that they know what we're going to do and we know what they're going to do, and so it'll all come down to execution in the end. How much does it help a guy, especially when you're, you have a little bit of nerves, how much does it help a guy to, to have, you know, Paul Perkins, a oh, guy who can catch the ball I, I could the Yeah, I couldn't, put a, I couldn't put a value on it because – Honestly, it was everybody around me. You know, when they looked at me and I, uh, I was in the game, and they all had complete confidence in me. Then I knew we were we were ready to go. And you know, coming out of the half or coming out of the locker room at halftime, I knew for a fact we were going to win that game. It was just how we were going to do it. And uh, it's amazing to be on a team like this, and it just makes me proud to be a Bruin. You put value on it. It's tuition, it's books, <laughs> tuition, books, maybe books, full cost of scholarship here right, pretty right. soon. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'd say it's way more valuable. Okay. Than that. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks,